Aloha and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where every week during the legislative session we give you a chance to hear directly from state senators about what's going on here at the Capitol. This week, Kaka'ako is one of the state's fastest growing and fastest changing areas. In addition, developments in the Ala Moana area mark the Kaka'ako Ala Moana Waikiki Corridor as one of the most dynamic areas in the state. Senator Sharon Moriwaki, heard in the, from the 12th District, represents those areas as well as Mo'ili Ili and McCulley. Aloha, Senator. Aloha. Um, th this is your first elected office. It is. So people don't have a long, long history of hearing about you. It's true. Can you tell us about what you were doing before? Sure. Just before being elected, I was at the University of Hawaii. I was uh, the uh, co-chair of what's called the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. It's one of the projects that I started as associate director for the Public Policy Center at UH. Uh, and I, my whole life has been in public service, but on the executive side, I was uh, the uh, um, uh, vice president for, administ uh, for administration and for uh, the academic affairs for UH Manoa uh, and the system. Uh, before that, I was a, uh, administrative director for the courts and worked under uh, C.J. Moon. Uh, mm -hmm. And before that, I was in the Waihei cabinet mm -hmm. as both the deputy director of labor and the the um, uh, what's now called the Department of Human Resources Development, the Personnel Services Director. So I've been in, in public service a long time, uh, and this is the first time I've run for elected office, and I'm um, seeing it from a legislative perspective. So what convinced you to, to finally run for office? Well, you know, Richard, four years mm -hmm. ago, um, our, our community, as you say, was fastest growing, mm -hmm. a lot of buildings coming up, and, and the community was constantly going to the authority, it was the Hawaii Community Development Authority, which is the zoning development um, um, authority in, for Kaka'ako. We kept on fighting a lot of the, the variances that were, were being brought in without community input. So we went to our senator, then senator, my predecessor, and said, you know, you really need to support the community. Well, we, we didn't seem to get very far with that. And so I told the senator, I said, you know, if you don't do something, I'm going to run. <laughs> he said, <laughs> so four years later, nothing was being done. Uh, and I vowed that I would represent our community, bring our voices to the Capitol and make sure that our voices are heard. And you were a strong advocate for Kaka'ako at the time, and you're also a Kaka'ako resident. Correct. I was, yes, and I am. I still am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you describe to us what it's like seeing the process from the inside or from the other side. Okay, from the other side, you know, we thought, oh, they're not listening to us. We'd come up and, you know, uh, we really couldn't get, like, the heights restricted. Uh, Representative Scott Syke, who also lives in the district, was very instrumental in changing law four years ago, making it much more community-oriented. Three members on the board changed the board composition, terminated that board. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of changes were made. From the inside, um, you know, I'm quite impressed. I, I, um, I, I have to say, my colleagues are very thoughtful, they're considerate, they listen to the community, um, and, and, and they really do change the bills, amend the bills, to take into consideration a lot of the comments that come in. And um, I, I'm so impressed. They defer to me as being the, <laughs> the senator from the district, so I can bring voices that I hear in the community, and some of the bills um, are being heard um, that represent what people have been crying about for years and years and not getting anything done. So I, I am um, hopeful. Of course, it's early in the session, so we'll see where the priorities fall yeah. at the end of session. But for now, I'm, I'm um, really pleased to be here, and I, I um, have very good colleagues in the Senate. Uh, in addition to the, the, the building height and density concerns, what other uh, issues are developing in Kaka'ako? Well, um, in Kaka'ako per se, um, there's, there's a lot happening in terms of, of more looking at um, trying to develop um, like the bridge across, uh, this is Howard Hughes again, the bridge across the Alamona uh, Boulevard because as you know, there was mm -hmm. that huge accident which was right. awful uh, a couple weeks back. Um, and, and I think there's more of a, um, with the new board, there is more community involvement. So, and I, I believe um, when I talked to Howard Hughes, Todd Paul says they're going to have a couple of community meetings before they even put pen to paper. So that's mm -hmm. a positive thing that's come about. Um, 
And, and again, traffic, congestion, infrastructure, all of these are concerns that we hope will be addressed um, by HCDA. Mm -hmm. The homeless, of course, is always a big right. problem. And one of my, um, my efforts is to help the Children's Discovery Center. Mm, it right. has, uh, the director is going to close shop, and I think you saw it in the papers. We've been trying to get uh, her grant in aid uh, through DAGS, uh, Department of Accounting and General Services, to start supporting them so that they can build some of the renovations they wanted. Also, to have that property transferred from the state, because, you know, it's all state land. Right transferred to the city so the city can start monitoring the HPD can come in and and monitor over the night hours when the homeless poop on her steps mm -hmm. and you know she, she has a real hard time cleaning up uh, every day and and I feel for her and I, I really hope that we can solve it without having to make any new laws mm -hmm. but enforce the laws we have on the books. Okay, you know, we talk a lot about Ala Moana as well. There's some new developments going on there. But it seems like one area that doesn't get a lot of attention is the Makali Mo'ili'ili area. Um, what's going on there that, that we should be concerned about? Well, there about? are new developments coming on. It is city property, so um, a lot of the, the, um, the kinds of things you hear in Kaka'ako, which go through HCDA, the, mm -hmm. the state jurisdiction, uh, go through um, the city council. So there are buildings, like Alder Street is one. It's the, where um, the judiciary had the... Um, right. the um, mm -hmm detention home, mm -hmm. while well, they're building next to it um, uh, affordable housing, and then having the detention home still there, but it's to house uh, sort of the status of offenders waiting for, for um, hearings. Mm -hmm. um, they, there may be like 12 beds. It's not a big facility, but they want to keep that going and also get get um, the affordable housing, which is really needed in mm -hmm. the Makalimo'ili Ili area. There are those kinds of developments occurring. Again, you know, there are a lot of older people there. They're afraid to go out at night. So part of what we're trying to look at is how can we support the seniors to help them age in place, help them even in terms of renovating their homes and their um, making like two-story walk-ups or, or kinds of things where they can have some income to help them survive and stay in, in their own homes. So I think elderly services also um, helping to renovate these houses and giving them low interest loans. So a lot of housing bills are coming through because affordable housing is a real big issue. There. Um, you introduced an interesting bill this session that's getting a lot of attention right now involving um, repeat offenders oh, at yeah. Mikey Key. Can you tell us about that? Sure. You know, going to the neighborhood boards, you hear all the concerns that come up and all the people who get excited about what's happening and, and a concern. Uh, one of those is the bill um, that's called, I call it the three strikes bill. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is that we've got a lot of repeat offenders. They come in, they assault people. I guess Waikiki is a haven for you know, mm -hmm. doing anything you want. Right. Uh, and so um, these people come in and they, they, they know who these people are. So HPD said this would really help if they, they had a way to keep these repeat offenders out. So this bill says that if um, you come in for the third offense, say misdemeanors, um, then the judge has the option to put you on probation and say, hey, you know, buddy, the next time you come in, you're going to jail. Mm -hmm. and, get, and, and the restriction is between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m., um, you can't come into Waikiki because that's when all these crimes occur. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it really is a deterrent, and hopefully these misbehave, behaving misbehaviors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop. Um, and it's a similar bill that, um, that passed uh, and has been very effective, which, which was for the prostitution, um, on street prostitution, that stopped mm -hmm. the street walkers right. that we used to have mm -hmm. before. So we'll see. Again, bills are to be heard. Right. So people who like it, people who don't like it, um, should come in. And, and I say from the Senate side anyway, I see that the, the chairs really do listen to everybody, the committee listens to everybody, and if there's something wrong with the bill that can be addressed, they amend the bill so that something effective gets passed, hopefully. Now, this bill is for um, convictions for misdemeanors. Yes. Um, so it doesn't include status offenses. One of the no. concerns is with, say, runaways who, no. who congregate in Waikiki. No. These are people who actually have been convicted of a crime, mm -hmm. a misdemeanor, so it's low offenses. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's like three times, you do it three times, yeah. shouldn't you learn? Right. <laughs> you know, and so the judge, and it's also discretionary. So the judge can say, okay, if there's a good, um, good cause exception, mm -hmm. like you go to work, except that you shouldn't be misbehaving if you go to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then, you know, you're, you're, you know mm -hmm. he could not 
put this uh, penalty of jail on the fourth offense. Okay. Um, what other concerns are you hearing just from generally from, from the, the district as a whole, other than development, I mean, uh, and, and crime, of course? Are there some lower level issues that people I, should be aware I of? I think it's, it's all the same, and it's across the state, and that's why affordable housing is my number one priority. Mm -hmm. It's really affordable housing. And this session, you'll see, and, and my chair, I'm on the housing committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> um, chair has put in a slew of bills in affordable housing, um, whether it's 99 year leases to, um, uh, helping those at the, the real high demand, which is 80% of the area median income income levels and below, um, as well as rent supplement programs. So affordable housing is is like I, we really need to pass that. The second is Kupuna aging yeah. in place. We have a lot of elders, especially in my district, and so a number of bills coming coming out are to have Kupuna Care, Kupuna Caregiver programs, um, and also helping them age in place, active living in your later mm -hmm. years. Um, the lower level bills, um, I guess, it, it, again, it, nothing is low level. You know what <laughs> I mean? I see, see crime. Um, I've got another bill. Um, um, which, which actually is, is something that came in discussions with Liquor Commission that a lot of these crimes or infested places are these clubs that are right. unlicensed. Mm -hmm. So that's another bill I have in place that raises the penalty uh, to a felony if a club or an establishment does not not register if they're serving liquor. Mm -hmm. And um, and then that gives the um, the um, authority for the liquor commission to come in and inspect okay. and so those are the kinds of bills right now in the books that i see well thank you senator thank all of you for joining us today and join us again next time live at the legislature